To quit porn, you must run away from it and turn your back on it. But you must also run towards something else. Or to be more exact, you must run towards someone else. You must replace your pursuit of sin with your pursuit of God. There is no power in a program. Power over sexual sin, power to live a victorious life, power to live a life that pleases God comes from God alone. If you want to run away from porn, run towards God. Here's how you do it. Pursue holiness. If you want to quit porn and masturbation, run in the right direction. What you run from and what you run towards has eternal consequences for your soul. Read Hebrews 12, 14. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Holiness is something you are to pursue, to chase after. This command appears in the New Testament because this world offers you alternatives to holiness. You have the choice between sexual morality and sexual purity. You have the option of looking at porn or looking away. You have the choice of pleasuring yourself or pleasuring your wife. You have a choice of two directions to run. If you want to see God, run in the right direction. Pursue holiness. In your battle with sexual lust and sexual temptation, you may have fallen into the error of believing that your fight is outward. You may think that your enemy is porn sites or hookup apps or strip clubs or so-called adult magazines or movies. You may think that quitting porn means overcoming outside influences. But your greatest enemy in your fight for sexual purity looks back at you in the mirror each morning. Your worst source of temptation is you. James tells you that each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. You and I are tempted by porn because we desire porn. You can't be tempted by something you don't desire. So in your fight to quit porn, start by changing what you desire. The most effective cure for sexual temptation is execution. As Paul says, therefore put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Take those parts of your earthly nature that respond to sexual temptation and put them to death. Kill them. Execute them. Don't let them live. How? By putting thoughts and desires to death by changing the subject. As soon as a lustful thought enters your mind, kill it by thinking of something holy and pure. When an image of a porn actress enters your mind, put that image to death. When a strong sexual desire enters your mind, kill it by reciting scripture you have memorized. One of the secrets to resisting sexual temptation is not this, but that. You avoid the temptation by doing something else instead. This is the essence of what Paul means when he says, do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. In other words, do not be drunk, but be filled. Not with wine, but with the Spirit. Not this, but that. To gain victory in your life over porn and sexual urges, replace the sources of the temptation, the wine, with the Spirit. Invite the Spirit into your life. Seek His presence, His guiding, his sanctifying power. You won't find sexual purity on any map. So don't expect to arrive at a place in your life where you experience zero sexual lust, zero sexual temptation, or zero sexual fantasies. Your goal is to walk properly today. As Paul says in Romans 13, 13, walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. 
Don't aim to eventually conquer your sexual urges and temptations and sexual sins. Don't think that working your way through 12 steps of recovery will one day land you at your destination with a halo waiting for you. Sexual purity isn't a destination you hope to reach tomorrow. It's a walk you take with the Lord today.